Okay, good morning. Good Saturday morning. This is March the 9th, 2019. This is the Hukulo Saturday webinar. And today, this is Jim Charles is channeling for us. Um, today in the room, on, on my side, we have Brooke, Christine, Don, Eva, James, Jonathan, Lucia, Mark, Marlene, Reinhardt, Shear, and somebody that doesn't have a name, um, <laughs> Bob, and myself, Michelle. And who do you have, Jim? I have Angie and Barb and Maggie, Margie, I mean, and James, and Jack, and Ray. Hi, everybody. Good to see you this morning. So we have a couple of announcements. Um, we have a standing announcement that is the book that uh, Hublo has compiled through Jim's channelings called From the Galaxy with Love, and it is available on Amazon. And it's also available an audiobook. Um, and there will be a workshop on August 8th through 12th in Rochester, and you can email Andy for details or register at a speed 6456 at gmail.com. Very good. And um, we've already kind of behind the scenes ask for whoever is going to come through. So I think that's fine. And are there anyone? Are there? Is there anyone? And are there, if it's plural, <laughs> who would like to give a blessing this morning before we begin? Barbara will give a blessing. Okay. Anybody else? I'll do one. Yeah, we'll give a blessing. Who do you? Um, Angie will do a blessing. Great. Angie, you want to go? Okay. These are days of great change, not only for your people, but for the galaxy and the universe. Keep in mind that all that is done on your world is being observed, and all that is done on your world is also affecting the galaxy and universe. As we continue to reach out to you, you continue to gain confidence in our awareness and in our being and in our truthfulness that we are not here to bring disaster but to bring peace and tranquility and friendship continue to grow so that we may find a way into your world in a peaceful and non-aggressive way much love to you all for we are working in a way that will be good for all peoples. Okay. So I wanted Barbara, to... Barbara's turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead.
This place is well known even from great distances. And we just want you to let us let you know that we are also sending prayers and and love to your peoples so that your ascension will be pure and be happy and reach the heights that you require. Thank you. That was so tickly. Um, <laughs> what? It was so tickly, tingly. Um, oh, yes. The, um, so I wanted to mention to everybody how when I moderate, I like you to put, just type the letter Q into the side chat and I will put you in a lineup and call on you and keep it to two questions and then you can circle around again. Keep your, if you're, keep your questions in a general nature, not like very personal unless it's super applicable to the whole at large. I think that covered it. Very good. Sound about right? Okay. Yes, it sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you. I am, um, welcome everybody. Um, today is a beautiful sunshiny day here and it's actually warming up into the 30s. So we're having a heat wave. So <laughs> compared to what we have been experiencing and I just got back from Florida, so I need more heat again. I, I, um, I'm missing my Florida vacation drastically. It was just so nice. <laughs> That's so anyway, uh, today I I just uh, does anybody have any other requests for? There was one other one I saw for Sanyasi of the Pleiadians. Sanyasi, okay. Yeah. We have Grindel, we have Takur, we have Ish, we have uh, Isaiah. Who else? Elijah. No, it was Elijah. Uh, oh, Elijah. Anybody Fakal else? Votan. Fakal Votan. Okay. And Yeshua. And Yeshua. Yes. All right, very good. So let's see who comes. I know Elijah is coming today. He told me that he was coming. So he'll be first, I'm sure. But uh, after that, who knows who will come? I do not know. All right. Have a great session, everybody. Um, I love you all, and um, we'll see uh, what Elijah has to say today. Greetings, I am Elijah. Today, I would like to speak about communication. More specifically about listening to one another. Many of you get very busy. And when you are listening to people, it's not with your full attention. It's not with your full thought processes. And many times in business, you do just listen with your head. And that means when you're listening when you're he with your head, you're readying a response because it's, it's just that kind of communication. But I am more interested in your communication one with another. Sometimes you do get very busy and in your personal life, you are so busy that when people talk to you, you are really not listening to what they have to say. You are, you are moving forward ever so quickly that some of that, what they are saying with their heart is not being heard. I want you to practice listening with your heart. What is the difference between listening with your head and listening with your heart? If you stop and give 100% of your thoughts and your ears to what is being said, you will understand 
that there are some things that you are missing from even those that are closest to you. You will be missing some of their feeling, some of their intention for you. If you listen 100% with your heart, you will find that you will be moved every now and then by what they are saying to you. Do not become too busy to listen with your heart. Do not become too overwhelmed to listen with your heart. And of course, you can listen with your heart and your head at the same time. But some of people have trouble with um, multitasking. But that, I think, is something you should learn to do. Because the head will create a response, but the heart will listen and know exactly what is being said. So you are responsible for listening to all those around you because this is a time when you need to help each other and encourage each other, lift one another up, which I have said so many times. And that can be difficult if you're really not listening to what is being said. Now, sometimes you think that what is being said is frivolous. Sometimes you think what's being said has no real purpose, but that also has a subliminal part to it. So listen with your heart and you may figure that they, these people were trying to talk to you for a long time and haven't been able to get through, and so they're not really saying too much to you at this point. And that is when you have to come back and say, what is it that you really want to tell me? What is it that you really want to communicate? Because there are those around you that have lost communication with you because you're so busy. You're so involved in getting the things done you need to get done, that you're really not listening. And that is part of your mission, is to listen carefully to all those around you, even those that you are busy uh, trying to help. Many times you'll be going, oh, I'm so happy that I got to help these people here. But did you hear anything they said? Did you actually get a, a message of what they really needed above and beyond what you were giving them? Have, have you actually heard them with their true heart and true voice? Because many are crying for help and, you, and they're asking for help in ways that are, are not normal, as you may know. But listen carefully. Engage with your heart. Engage with your thought process. Do not be too busy to listen and hear what people are saying. And also, you may feel that you are not being heard. That you, the things that you say are not uh, coming into earshot of those people that you're talking to. It's just passing over or through. So that is what I want to talk about today, bringing your communication into a greater understanding. For this world needs that kind of communication one with another. You need to communicate your thoughts and heart, and they need to communicate theirs. Do not be too busy to give them your heart and to receive theirs. It can be a very emotional time when you really listen, when you stop and look them in the eye, and they may not be used to that because you haven't done it for so long, but when you stop and look them in the eye and engage them with your heart, they may be moved. You may not expect what comes next, but also let them know that you would like to open that communication as well if, if you feel that you are not being heard. 
so that they can actually look you in the eye and communicate with you. There are so many people out there that are hungry for communication, that are hungry for that human aspect that they are really not getting in a world that rushes by them. The world is at fast pace right now. Slow it down to communicate, please. There are those that are important to you, and some of you may engage with some of those people that are important. But remember, do not let um, things pass. It could be very important that you help somebody that's really needing it and you're not really paying attention. So be present in the moment. Listen to that. Be present in the moment. Being present in the moment speaks volumes of, of your love and understanding for that person. If you are present with them, they know it. If you are present with them, they will feel that engagement. If you're present with them, trust will grow. If you're present with them, they are there for you because they understand who you are in a greater way. And you are being more honest with your communications. It is a beautiful day. There are hard times coming. I know I don't want to be negative, but it is true. We have to be realistic that not all life is a bowl of jelly or a happy time. But there are things that concern us and bring us pain and concern. So when those times come, though it is also important to be present at those times because that is a time where everyone can move forward. And you may be able to help them through these times and they may be able to help you back. I just love the people here because they do listen they do understand most things and they don't usually twist my words but when you're not listening carefully that can happen you can hear a message and twist it all around because you thought you heard the right thing but pay attention you may be not getting it and if you don't get it, listen to it again. With a, don't try to interpret it to, for someone else when you're not sure what you heard in the first place. So bring yourself into the present moment. I think that's what I'm trying to say most. And engage with the heart. And bring about a greater communication. For you do need to lift one another up. You do need to lift one another up on occasions. I love you much. And if there is a question, I will take it. Thank you, Elijah. Um, I don't know if anyone in your room has a question immediately. I know. Usually people don't ask me many questions because they're trying to figure out what I said. But... <laughs> Yes. I don't think today's was that hard to decipher. Be where uh, you're at. I, I think somebody it. had a question. Okay, great. Christine. Thank you very much. Thank you very, much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm finding that um it's very hard for me to stay present when somebody's talk talking the radio the television or through youtube when i'm trying to track something or listening listen to a lesson or something that's on the um youtube and i was wondering um what is it what resistance am i putting up that i'm having a difficult time to listen to be present right. you have to ask yourself a couple questions is okay. the subject matter uh going to my head or to my heart and if it's not going to your heart, 
why is it not going there? Um, is it something that you feel that is not important to your spiritual growth, perhaps? It's, remember this, if it's something spiritual, if it's something personal, try to move that listening to the heart. Bring it into an understanding that um, it's something that will build you up. And if you feel that it is a spiritual time, bring it to the heart and say, what does the heart have to say about this? What does the heart feel about this subject matter? If you don't feel anything toward it, then you just listen with your head. And it, it, that's fine, but your attention span is a little less because you're not as present with that. Yes. Um, with the intellectual side, when you are listening just with the head, you are also thinking other thoughts. When yes. you're listening with the heart, you are engaged only in listening to what is being said and not trying to uh, answer the questions or not trying to bring in a response yet until the thought is complete. And then you start to answer. But that's where some listen with their heart and their head. They're, they're listening with their heart to a certain extent, but they're also developing answers with their head to reply because they feel that it's necessary to be prepared with a, a good answer. But you know what? Sometimes silence for a few moments is very acceptable. You're listening, you are bringing in that thought process and you're uh, no, making sure you understand it. So I do not think that a moment of silence after someone speaks and you listen with your heart is inappropriate. Well, what I'm finding also is that I'm multitasking while the other person is talking. It's then it can't be that important to you. Okay. If it was that important to you, you would be giving it your full attention. Now, there are some subject matters that are not, you would just like to be, your interest is piqued by it, but you, you, you're you not really uh, present with it. Yes. That's fine. You can multitask all you want. If that's the kind of, um, but don't be surprised if you don't retain any of the information or if the information is a little confusing because you're not present with that information. Now, if you are listening with the heart and the head, you can actually understand it better. And, and be still, if it's important information, you may want to be still and listen. Okay. Thank and I you. love you very much. And I know that, you're, that your communication is, you, you're, you, do, you communicate with the ethereal more than human to human, but you're still your communications are important. And I believe that engaging your eyes with other humans is difficult for you, but it's something that you need to do in the future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Christine, I'm curious um, if you have this, I just noticed this last night. Elijah, this is in the same vein of that question. Like Matt Kahn was doing a teaching on my friend's television and I cannot hold a conversation if I hear words coming out of a screen or a radio or another conversation behind me to make myself present to the information being spoken to me directly. Correct. Then I, it, 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 I absolutely like almost come unglued. Like I am like, I have to turn that off. I can't Correct. hear you know, that you and hear at the same time. Record it and listen to it at, during a time of, of when there is no distractions. Being distracted does not help with communication or learning. Like no. when you listen and are distracted, you you are definitely not getting much out of it. Now I know that um, Christine is distracted sometimes by the animals. She has birds singing, she has dogs barking, and cats jumping on her lap, and things of that nature. However, 
she has learned to communicate with them in a very heartfelt way. They feel her heart. They know her heart. Um, it is other humans that do not know her heart. Yeah, you you got it right on the button. <laughs> okay, so it's my avoidance of other people. Well, the thing is, you have to have a reason to uh, communicate. You have to have a reason to uh, be present with someone. If there is no reason for that presence with someone, then you don't have it. And many times with humans, you cannot find that reason because you have no common ground with them. But if there is someone you have common ground with them, try listening with your heart and see how different that communication is. Is that being disrespectful of the other person because um, I can't? Well, keep... chances are they're doing the same with you. Oh. <laughs> um, but the thing is, if you stop, if, if you will surprise them, if you stop and actually when they speak to you, look into their eyes and listen, they will be, uh, uh, if, they, if they look into your eyes, they will be shocked to see that you're looking back because that means you are actually engaging them in a very much more personal way than you have before. And if you actually are listening to what they have to say you and and respond out of your heart and not out of your head which out of your head can be angry or nasty or whatever but out of your heart can be compassionate and say you know thank you for that um i i wish you wouldn't have said it so nastily but um i i do understand what you're saying thank you be gracious under fire Wow, finding something polite. I'm not all that glib, <laughs> or I can't. <laughs> oh, I think that you can be polite. I absolutely do. Okay. You yeah, are thanks. very polite, and you are very kind and nice, but there are certain people that press your buttons that I see in your life, and those are the ones you have to communicate with the most. And so that is what I'm talking about. Okay. My heart to your heart. Thank you very much. I love you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Elijah. I don't think there are any more questions in our group. Are there any in your room? I have a question. There is one, yes. Okay, great. There actually might be more than one. Okay. Yes. When you're communicating with someone um, and they like are using avoidance of eye contact, I, when I am talking to someone, my eyes are on the person that I'm talking. Right. So that I can, I know that they know that I am engaged in them. And, right. But when they don't give it back to me. Yes. When they don't give it back to you, that's, that means that their mind is on something else. They're not being present with you. Or there's a reason. There, there may be some difficulty with you that they don't want to, to engage with you. That they may have a problem with you or you may have a problem with them or whatever. And they're not sure if they can actually engage with you and be honest about how they're feeling. Now, if, if you don't know that person very well, there's not much you can do. But if you do know them well, you should ask them, is, um, are you all right? Uh, is there a problem? Can we discuss it? And if they say, oh, no, everything's fine, then it might be a personal problem with them. They may be having some problems that they don't want to share with anybody. They may be having some problems that are uh, not related to your conversation. So this can be a reason for avoidance. But the thing is, if everyone were to listen with their hearts, and I'm, I'm using this with this group because many of you talk to each other. And that's why I brought that up. And I think it is important to note that others may be avoiding giving you their heart because their heart is troubled and they don't want to share that or they don't want to feel obligated to someone else uh, knowing that. But be present if you are present, you'll be able to share your problems if you have them with them if that is what this conversation needs. 
If it does not need that, it will not come up. But those things, when you engage with your heart, feed a heart-filled conversation, a heart-fueled conversation. So if you do engage with your heart, it will be a totally different kind of conversation than you've had with this person for a long time, I'm sure. And that is a beautiful thing and will bring you closer together and will help move people forward in their positivity, their vibration, and their their acceptance one to another. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, if I may interject, I, I, I speak for myself. Yes. Um, I find that the eye contact's really tough uh, with somebody if I'm going to want to listen. My goal is to listen to somebody. Eye contact makes that really tough for me to do. Um, so I find if I'm not looking at somebody, I can actually listen to them and hear them much better. Are you listening with your head or your heart? Uh, don't really know. <laughs> I think that I when really you're... Know at the moment, but I mean, it depends on the situation, I think. But I think that you're one that would try to avoid intimacies in some ways. Mm -hmm. So that is why you it, you find it difficult to engage with the eyes. You're an intellect. You have a great I. You have uh, thought processes that you want to share, and so you listen more with your head, so that you'll be ready to uh, give them a response. When you listen with your heart, you may not may not even have a response. So there's something to think about. But you see, if you're at work, if that's the kind of thing you do at work, that's probably fine. You you may not want to have intimate conversations when you're doing business. But when you're at home with family and friends, this is a time when you might want to practice not, not con continuous eye contact, but you should give some eye contact, at least as uh, to show them that you're present with them. Does it make sense? I appreciate the input. I understand. Where Elijah, I was thinking about um, first time I went to a chapel. It was kind of a metaphysical church, and their communion is you look each other in the eyes, you hold hands like one hand on top of the other, and you just share love, unconditional love with your eyes. And it was the most profound thing I had ever done. Um, just being that intimate, there's a level of intimacy when you're willing to share, like look someone in the eye that leaves you feel vulnerable and very, very raw if you're not used to doing it. Over time and over practice, it becomes that's how you know you're actually communicating with someone. So, I mean, I have conversations where people can't look me in the eye because it makes them very uncomfortable. But, and I used to be one of those people too, but it takes practice, but it's worthwhile because there's nuances and knowing and information coming to and from the eyes. Correct. So, that's beautiful. But in, in some cases, there are some people that have reasons why they do not want to connect eyes mm -hmm. because it is a reminder of a past situation right. or it is a it's something that is uncomfortable yes it is something that they are not uh, present uh, they have not been shown how to do it correctly in the sense that usually when they had this kind of eye contact it was not a pleasant thing yeah. so you must take that into consideration. Not everyone is the same. It's a pra for, for me, it was a practice. Yes. Of but yet, I would Releasing the fear of being present with another person. For those people that have that kind of fear, they should let people know uh, at some point that are very close to them that they do have that kind of fear and that it's not them per se, it's it's something that they're working on. Thank you very much. I think that's a great topic. Um, 
I'm going to ask one more question and then I think we'll move on. Very uh, well. This is, I think, unless there's anyone else in the room who, your room, who is had a question for room? Elijah? No. Um, Krellick would like to know, um, he's feeling like he's getting radio static, like certain energies aren't getting through, and he would like to know if it's the earth energies. Communication wise, yes, there's some earth energies that are causing communication interruptions. Absolutely. Uh, if he's trying to communicate off world, especially because there's a lot of those that would try to interfere with that kind of communications. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> right here in the present world, yes, earth, earth, it, even in the same room, it can be difficult to communicate in some places on the earth at certain periods of time because of the different kinds of vibrations and uh, disruptions coming from the earth but not everywhere is experiencing those kinds of things so uh places where the earth is thin and there's a lot of earthquake and volcano activity there's a lot more disruption in those areas but uh in areas such as where i am right now is uh not as bad but yes there are earth disruptions absolutely but that that is just one and more reason to start listening with the heart is because it's it can be so much more rewarding than just trying to listen with the mind thank you very much you're welcome thank you for visiting you are welcome We'll see who comes and hangs out next. Much love. Much love to you all. Greetings, this is Ish. Hi, Ish. It's been a while since I visited you, so I've come to say hello. And how is everyone? I personally am super happy you're here. I don't know how everybody else is doing. Yes, I'm happy to be here as well. There are many questions on the earth at this time about uh, ascension periods and when that's happening and all these different things. So much different kinds of informations that are out there about so many different things. And it can be very confusing. Be careful who you listen to. If they're too negative, you want to stop listening to them because they have an agenda. You want to listen to the more pure channels that have no agenda uh, as far as getting out a particular conspiracy message or something of that nature. Those are the kinds of things that are trying to sway human thought so that things can be more disruptive in the future. So you do not want to listen to conspiracy theories. Just wait for the history to prove it, that it happened. So, and sometimes history is also not uh, recorded properly. So um, you may want to question some of the past history but I can help you with that. But remember, everyone has their view of it. There are so many views of one situation that it can be very confusing. No, I have a question with regard to history real quick. Somebody was said, or I was watching a Q, quantum healing hypnosis technique session and they were talking about the people who came to earth to bore for minerals gold yes who, is that the anunnaki or yes you, okay just check in on my yes history. that was the anunnaki they they came to earth to uh find gold they created a species to help them mine it but they broke they broke the law the laws set in place also, right? Well, the thing is, back then, there was no law about Earth at that time. 
the galactic uh there was a galactic uh uh government however they weren't looking at earth because it was primitive and um they they didn't think anybody could be too uh, destructive right. to this primitive world so they weren't really governing and governing it very well but the anunnaki came they wanted gold everybody in the universe wants gold so they came to my gold they found places where they knew that there was gold they created a sort of ogre like uh, uh people to help them mine it very un not unintelligent but low intelligence so that they would, would be obedient and servile. But then they went on to actually uh, bring uh, mankind into a greater existence by you know, making them in more into their image and intellect. So uh, still not their intellect, but uh, one that would rise up and they knew it. But then they got, became dissatisfied with that and they, uh, uh, Enlil destroyed everything with a flood, and but except for what Enki was able to to uh, let people know and 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 save Noah's Ark, so to speak, something of that nature, but not exactly. But um, and that story has been proliferated throughout history in different books, sacred yeah. books. So uh, even the your Bible has taken this uh, the cuneiform version or uh, of that flood and put it into their version of the flood and bringing God into it and doing all kinds of things to make it more meaningful. But it was actually the Sumerian tablets that spoke of the flood the first at first it was far more ancient than the flood that is spoken about in the Bible. Yes, and also very interesting because I never learned anything Sumerian in history class. So anyway, <laughs> they leave that part out. Um, yes, of course. So Eva, Eva has a question for you. Hello, Eva. Good to see Eva. Eva, is it Eva? It's Sorry. Eva. Okay. Where is she? Hello, dear. I can't hear you or see you yet. Okay. Somebody else has a question and we can go back to her. I have a question. Okay, there's a question in the room. A Barbara, correct? Barbara, yes. Yes. I was just thinking, when you're talking about the Anunnaki using people to mine the gold and stuff yes my question is with all the technology how can they couldn't use the technology to get the gold besides people oh they decided that they wanted to do it that way that they did have tons of uh technology but they were they said oh let's create a people that will help us with it they did do a lot of the mining with technology but these uh were the people that carried there were some things that were just best done uh by manual labor and that's what they did okay. but they to actually mine the gold deep in the uh, the ground oh yes they used a lot of technology but they needed some people to sort the boxes and do, do this and do that that only manual labor can do efficiently and so that's what they did they created a species that would help them do that and could lift. Would that be the caveman type mentality? Yes, I, I forget what they called them. They had a special name for them. Did the uh, Anunnaki, <laughs> when they talk about in the Bible that were created in the image of God, are they talking about Anunnaki? Um, I don't think the Bible mentions Anunnaki by name. I could be wrong. No, but they don't. But they, um, they are mentioned in the Bible in some ways, yes. I'm just wondering whose image, if it was the Anunnaki or is it? It's God. Well, you see, God created all beings, so it would be in God's image as well. So it does not matter. 
uh, God, God's imagination covers everything. So um, his image, God created everything in his image, really. So a man would be part of that as well. So he created the Anunnaki in his image. So they created man in the, their image. So it, it was still God. Okay. I think uh, Eva is back. So Eva, are you there? I, we tried to get her before, but I could not get through. Okay, if she did not come back, I just took her. Did she drop out? She did, and I guess she's trying to get back in. Oh, I see. Very well. Um, Chambers of Light would like me to ask you if the difference between our astral self and four. 4D? 4D self, if there is any difference. Is there a difference? Well, you are not in your 4D self. And when you sleep at night, you go to the, you, uh, your astral self is basically your, a blueprint of your spiritual self that moves out from the body. No, it is not the same. Your, four, your 4D self is an actual, um, not not a spiritual body, but an actual body. Your 4D body will be in a density of fourth dimension or fifth dimension, whatever you want to call it. It's a density. And oh so, yes, it is a different kind of density than third dimension, which is a very solid kind of a dimension. 4D is a slightly less uh, dense area. They have some properties uh, that do not exist in this realm, some science that does not exist in this realm. And you'll find that as you go up through the dimensions, science changes just a little bit because that's the way God wants to, uh, uh, to work it. You will find that you have knowledge of some of these dimensional things in the third dimension but you cannot prove it completely. You know it's there, but you cannot prove it yet. But you will be able to eventually. But the thing is, you will discover that when you do prove it, it's not in your dimension. <laughs> How irritating. <laughs> I've had that happen. <laughs> well, so. you also develop ways to get to the next dimension but that's not within the near future yet quite yet yeah. i mean they are working on it with the uh the collider there but i don't think that they've discovered they've discovered other dimensions but not how to move through them or become part of another dimension not fully not safely okay. <laughs> no stargate yet okay this is very exciting because Eva is back. Yes, Eva, please. Hi, Ish. Do you hear me now? Yes, I do. Oh, how wonderful. Um, so thank you so much for all this interesting information. Um, I have a different question. I live in Rhode Island, and this morning I experienced earthquake, which really oh. surprised me. It's very unusual here. Yes, it is. And uh, my question is actually about possible um, pole shift, um, the electromagnetic as well as physical. And if you can, can explain the difference and possibility of happening and when. Well, Thank you. actually, your pole shift has already started. But we, uh, well, I shouldn't say we, it's not me. But there are many species holding it in place because a pole shift at this time would destroy all chances of first contact, all chances of becoming part of the galaxy would, would set things back uh, 80 or 90 years at least, maybe even more. Uh, but you have to understand also that right now, uh, within the last 65 years, you have advanced a, a 10,000 fold over the, the rest of your 
past histories. So they they see that you're getting ready for this actual first contact, uh, which has never really been in their scope in this the scope of the galaxy or universe before and so they don't want this uh pole shift to happen it's very destructive it takes about a day or and a half or two days to happen but it's inc incredibly destructive with winds and violent earthquakes and volcanoes and everything some people would would be saved but like I said, it would set everything back a hundred years at least. So I'm not even sure how much it would set them back. But they would have to rebuild the civilization uh, pretty much. And that with a lot fewer people. But they still would have a lot of knowledge and information. It just would take a great deal of time to get back to where they are today. And oh, say okay. And then the electromagnetic part is that your electromagnetic field is already in place. It's been in place since the beginning, and uh, planets with electromagnetic fields of this nature uh, it can support life and things of that nature. And uh, this electromagnetic field is actually part of the reason why the the uh, of for the polar shift but other it is also the way that the the planet is moving around the sun and there's so many reasons for the polar shift uh but they're trying to stop it it has the poles the poles have moved and that has caused weather changes and all kinds of things on top of the grand solar minimum which has also created many changes on the planet. So you have a you're working through a lot of different astronomical changes, astrological changes, and uh, just Gaia changes. Uh, plus the fact that your own all, many of your governments are dabbling into weather control uh, and many different other things that are affecting the way that the planet is developing. Plus, um, going back in time, uh, some people were sending their thought processes back in time uh, to, instead of moving forward with greater energy sources, they're going back to coal and oil and things of this nature, which are depleting quickly on your world. But the, uh, uh, except for under the polar caps, uh, you might find a great deal of oil and things of that nature there. But... Um, they're unminable at this point because of the depth and the, the keeping up with the uh, ice flow. And if the ice would should shift, or shift, it would break the the uh, pipes and things. So m mining the oil under the uh, the uh, Arctic Circle is very very uh, tricky. So there you have it. Some more information. Um, thank you. Let me just continue a little bit question about that. Um, during the workshop with Drumvalo Melchizedek, he told us that um, if that our human memory is connected to electromagnetic field, yeah. and because of electromagnetic pole shift for some time, there will be no electromagnetic field. It means that humans would lose memory. Is that correct? What can we do if that's true? That is the, that can happen. It is a probable future, but it is not something that I would tell you that it it's definitely going to happen. But your connection, your mental connection with the electromagnetic field is real. And if and the pole shift did affect that. And the other thing is the the way of uh, karma or the way that you think now is shifting and is and is polarizing. So um, there you'll find this polarizing effect in most every country at this time. And uh, polarizing is not a healthy thing. So I'm hoping that something will happen to uh, stop that. But uh, many have predicted that 
the polarization of the world in thought processes will end soon not with the ending of the electromagnetic field but because it has exhausted itself to some extent you cannot get farther away more extreme than they've already become so the extremities will become obsolete they they cannot get any more extreme and unless they start a civil war or uh, become uh, mentally challenged or unstable so super extremes are very unstable so i do not believe it will reach that effect uh, some will but it will actually show that the polarities have gone too far and people will start to uh, change <coughs> Thank you so much. I hope we will change. <laughs> yes, you understood what I was talking. They have become so polarized that they are becoming unhealthily polarized. They're too far to the left, too far to the right. So, yeah, I do experience it in my life. Thank you so much. Too conservative or too liberal. It can be unhealthy either way. Balance, balance. So there's a bunch of kids who under 20, under the age of 18, who are suing the government for global warming. So we don't have this polar shift. How do you see that panning out? Are, how are they suing them for something that- Because there's decades of research showing that- Oh, they want to sue them because they're not taking care of it. They're not, yes, because they know the problem and they refuse to fix it. Uh, well, more power to them, but they're going to find <laughs> out that um, they're going to find out that this global warming is only prefacing an ice age. Right. Okay. I'm going to move on. The, the possible ice age, let's put it that way. The, what you, all the different chemicals that are in your air has changed the global warming to something different. So it is uh, as they would say something that's going to to be very interesting to see uh, what the earth, how the earth reacts to all this uh, pollution. Right. It will be interesting. Up next, um, we have a question from Deb. Greetings. Thank you. Hello. Greetings. Hi. Hello. Um, I, uh, I heard from a prominent uh, channeler and medium this week. Uh, and he said that the timelines went from seven down to three. And he also said that the solar flash is a psyop. And I wanted to hear from you because I didn't resonate with the solar flash being a psyop. And what, what is a psyop? Um, Can you spell uh, that? Maybe I'm just not hearing it right. Uh, an, uh, psyop, uh, uh, how do I explain that? <laughs> a what? Psychological uh, operation. Oh, a psychic operation? Yes. Psychological Psy operation. operation. Okay. No, I don't, I don't resonate with that. No, because there are so many people trying to protect the earth from the sun at, at certain points from the solar flares and these kinds of things that there is not enough uh, psychic energy moving about on this earth at this time to cause that. Not, there's not enough powerful psychics to do that. Now, there are psychic a uh, aliens that would uh, want to maybe do that, but there's not enough of them, really. Um, most aliens want to preserve the earth because the earth is their future. The earth is has so many humans that have the in the DNA that they need for prosperity in the future. Uh, not that they are going to harvest humans. That's against the law, of course. But they're going to ask for a lot of DNA from humans so that they can make serums and things of that nature. So this doesn't, uh, I do not think that that is uh, happening at all. What was the other part of the question? Well, the solar the solar flash. I mean, that is something that's good for 
Oh, oh I mean, that's so supernatural, natural, yes. I mean, so, I mean, you, you, it's still going to happen, right? Well, <laughs> you've had several already. So they're, they're in the, your past recent history. And the actual uh, sun is calming down. Uh, so that's the grand solar minimum, meaning that you will get much less action from the sun as far as solar flashes and things of this nature. They still will happen, but they, they will be much less than they have been in the recent past. They have sort of, it's come to a place where there's a great calm across part of the sun there. And it's changed color, if you've noticed. The sun used to be yellow, and now it's sort of a bluish color. Okay, and um, I wanted to ask about geoengineering, the chemtrails. Uh, is that ever going to end? It will end. I mean, is there anything that's going to be done? What those are are efforts to, um, uh, to change the uh, climates and things of the world by other species so that they can inhabit them and uh, take uh, take the place of humanity that is not going to happen the there are many other species that are helping to remove them and also your governments have learned that some of the things that they use in jet fuel and things of that nature are very unhealthy to the uh environment and atmosphere so they have changed some of their fueling policies and principles. And so things on from Earth sides are a little safer. They still have a long way to go. But the ones that are being introduced by aliens trying to terraform your planet are being removed by other species. So they they see what's happening and they're not going to allow it. And, and so it's it's sort of a battle up there about putting in uh, chemtrails and taking out chemtrails. You will see that some days, if you will notice, this is very odd. There are some days that the sky is filled with chemtrails. And there are other days where you see not a one. Have you experienced that? Yeah. That not, is not, not lately. Here. I'll tell you, not, not lately that, here. In the zero chemtrails. But there are days that come where the sky is completely blue. There's not a single chemtrail. But then there are other days when you see 40 of them uh, on the same day. But that is because they are, they have a more advanced way of removing chemtrails. And um, it is working a lot better. But still, the atmosphere is still polluted and the ozone is still depleting. And so you still have problems, there's no question. But it is that there is help with those things that are not caused by humans. If it's not caused by a human, such as earthly disruptions and aliens, then they're allowed to help with that. But if you are making your own weather, they're not allowed to help you stop that. You are in charge of your planet. They can help with unnatural things, if so to speak, but they cannot help with what you are doing to yourself. It's just like you as an individual. You feed yourself and are healthy if you eat the right foods and do the right things. If you do not, then you are unhealthy. So who is going to tell you to change or make you change you have to do that yourself. And that is just the way it is with your planet. Your planet has to change itself and put itself on the right track instead of having someone else do it for you. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. I have one more question, and this one's kind of a personal one. Um, my husband has two hybrid children. Um, yes. Are all the hybrid children, are they ever going to meet their parents? We didn't know about this. We found out last year that uh, his yeah. DNA was taken um, and our, our, our memories were wiped. The thing is about that is they were permitted to do that for a while, but that is no longer permitted. 
um, you have to get permission, at least from the subconscious, for most programs, most hybridization programs need to get permission to take uh, DNA or sperm or egg, whatever it is that they take. And so uh, that is something different. It changed within the last few years. But as far as the hybrid children are concerned, yes, you will meet them after first contact, after all the rules and regulations are, are buffed out. But there are only certain species that will be involved in that hybridization, hybridization program. Not every species is involved in that. So the species that are involved with hybridization programs will have to iron out their own programs with the governments of the earth. It's going to be a fiasco at first because yeah. uh, you're going to have so many different species, uh, but the, uh, the, the governments will have to just put one set of rules in place, but that's going to be difficult to cover all the needs of all the different species that are out there. So you're going to have um, addendums and amendments to these rules and regulations for eons. So, but yes, after first contact, there will be, uh, after about a year or two, uh, some, the beginnings of uh, some interact exchange programs, if you will. And for those from other places to come here and those from here to go there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ish. Up next is Mark. Mark. Hey, Ish. How are you doing? Greetings. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm a little confused about your earlier caution against conspiracy theories, because I think most of the things we're learning about in these webinars fall okay. under the uh, umbrella term of conspiracy theories. So could you clarify a bit what you meant? Um, I meant something uh, something that you really can't prove that is happening, but they're prove they're saying that it is, and that it's really terrible, and it's going to affect the human race in a really awful way, and you have no idea what they're talking about. Um, there are many of such conspiracy theories out there where they said, oh, that they there's demons in the Vatican or whatever, uh, and running that. Do you really think there's demons in the Vatican? I don't think so. But yet there are conspiracy theories that say the demons are overrunning the Vatican and that they're going to take over the world or whatever. So these are the kinds of conspiracy theories that you should just let go. Well, although there is a lot of wrongdoing in the churches, absolutely, but it is being exposed at this time. Um. In the movie Above Majestic, um, they question whether or not the uh, the pointy hats, the miter caps, etc., are to cover up elongated heads for some humanoid-like species that might be in the Vatican. Is that uh, that's certainly a little less controversial than demons, but is that also that's just as possible? But do you see that? Um, the the hats that the the uh, they wear are not that big anymore. They're different sizes, uh, and the Pope doesn't even wear a hat most of the time. He does put that on for for because he has to, but for the most part, he doesn't like wearing any of the <laughs> papal outfits. He he is very different, and he sort of goes against all the pomp and circumstance that the Pope stands for. He's more human and more uh, attain, uh, reachable as far as uh, thought processes go. So yes, the Pope is definitely not alien. But yes, there are a few aliens that are cardinals or bishops, especially a few bishops that I know of, yes, with their big hats. And But uh, the thing is, when they are doing private ministries, they're not supposed to be wearing those big hats, but they do anyway. So, interesting. There are a few, but 
they are aliens and not demons. Well, um, I can't prove that you exist either, but I, I don't consider that a conspiracy theory. <laughs> Perhaps if I came down and hit you on the head. <laughs> well, as long as you don't break me in the process, I'd like that. <laughs> okay. I will scratch your scalp. Um, if I can. But uh, I'm seriously. Being, I'm being silly, of course. But um, the thing is, we can reach you in... Um, well, let me put it this way. If I didn't exist, uh, you, we wouldn't be having this conversation because Jim isn't that smart. <laughs> yes. Well, that's an assertion that, uh, you know, I have a great deal of respect for Jim and I'm not sure I could uh, prove, <laughs> prove anything one way or the other on that one. But seriously, to, to kind of clarify the whole conspiracy versus reality thing, can you sort of paint? us a big picture of who are the key factions on earth and outside of earth that are all vying with different agendas well around it, ascension and disclosure i cannot tell you that and the reason is is you all have free will and i can't disturb that you must listen to who you must listen to and that i cannot change i can warn you against uh listening to things that seem overly negative, yes, or ridiculous. I can warn you against that, but I can't say so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so are all bad, 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 because there are elements in go of good in every bad person, and there are ev ev evidences of bad in every good person. So I am not going to point fingers and judge at this time because it's not the right thing to do. You must feel in your heart who is telling the truth and who is not discernment. discernment there's a good word yes well it's kind of a challenging thing to it you is. Know, the heart but, is kind of a subtle indicator and it it's it's not like uh, reading a number on a lab instrument uh, in terms of accuracy <laughs> yes but you do have feelings and you do have sensibilities and you can let them guide you and you have done very well with that, I think. Well, I'm struggling because I want to be a voice for truth and reason in the world. But I don't know where, because there is such a huge cover up over the existence of aliens, and there has been a repression of releasing alien technology to the public for so long. It's who. There are a lot of theories about who's behind it and how they're keeping that all under wraps. Well, and how do you get, how do you find, how do you unearth the truth behind it when well, there's so many powerful the, entities covering it up? Within the last few years, they've released 5 million pages of UFO information. And in this, what they have done is this. They made it so hard to research the truth that they released. They said, if we release 5 million pages of it, uh, nobody will be able to find the true things within there. And some of those pages are completely blanked out. Um, did you notice that? But the truth is in there, and it, there are those pl places within those five million play pages that tell the truth about uh, certain incidences and experiences that they did not cover with black ink. And there are those that are still releasing information about um, alien cover-ups. One of those things is those people that, that have actually worked with aliens and worked in the scientific and secret government portions you can listen to them because their stories are mostly true they may have a slanted view of things but they do they they know they know what they've seen those people you can trust all right well that's helpful i think i've taken up my share of time thank you very much you're welcome i just find that a lot of our environment that breeds a lot of secrecy also breeds a lot of theories as to why those secrets right. are around. 
Yes, the, it's everybody has their opinion of who's covering up and what's covering up and if they're telling the truth and if they're lying. Just go with those people that have actually experienced something and uh, you will see that there is truth. You, you will know that they're telling the truth. You, you just, you feel the vibe of the truth coming from them. You, they're not nervous or feeling or, or making anything secretive. They're just saying, "This is what I saw. This is what I. This is what happened. This is what I did, and this is what that person did." And so it's more matter of fact. Thank you, Ish. Um, a number of our group would like to uh, hear an answer to a question from. Lily pad. Um, <clears throat> there's a boy in Mexico claiming uh, to have the soul of a volcano, Popocatapetl. <laughs> P O P O C A T E P E T L. Is that the boy's name? That he's claiming. I think that's the volcano's name. He said the volcano beings talk to him and she would like to know if you can see that is true volcanoes. yes there are volcanoes talking uh, uh beings in volcanoes that they do speak they are on a totally different dimension and they are on in the underworld dimension and if they are speaking to him he's in touch with underworld beings okay. now you will say those are negative beings those are awful not necessarily. They're from the underworld, right. from that dimension, from that place within the earth, within planets that are different kinds of dimension than, than the third dimension. They're sort of third dimensional, but they're not. Okay. So because they have, uh, they can see like a, a sun, they can see like uh, clouds and things. But if we were to go down, uh, talking we as third dimensional, I'm not third dimensional, but you as third dimensional would go down, you would not be able to see the same things I see. Okay, up next, Don has a couple of questions. Yes. First, he would like to know about the 5G networks um, that are being installed all over. Uh, they, are they harmful, is that the question? He wants to know, well, he actually asked if they were going to be a benefit, which perplexed me, but I would like to know if they're harmful. <laughs> um, the thing is, they are not something that you are used to at this point. They are something just like within the last 30 years, you have been exposed to new <clears throat> and various different kinds of waves, microwaves, 4G waves, 3G waves. Uh, all these different waves that are coming through and they do affect your thought processes and sometimes your physiology. Of course, microwaves would. Um, so the 5G will also benefit some people that are in a fourth dimensional headset mentally. They will, 5G will uh, help the brain, but it will not help the body necessarily. So, so um, it harm cells. Uh, it will not. Well, I have to study it a little more. Oh, okay. <laughs> because Thanks. where I am, there is no waves or G's or anything. But, um, but I see that mentally, five G can help and four G can help mental waves in some uh, to advance. And some of you have been experiencing advanced thought processes since these waves have been developed. Children are being born more intelligent because of some of these waves on your planet. But you see, this has been, this is not an accident. Uh, many of these have been planted uh, that the technology has been planted on your world so that you will develop faster. So anyway, but physically, not so much. It will advance thought processes, but
but not it's not great for the physical body but you will get used to it you will evolve beyond it and it won't take that much time because you are used to living in an electromagnetic field and these all these different waves uh, can do fit into the electromagnetic spectrum in some way and so therefore as you are part of the electromagnetic field these waves will integrate into you a little easier because you do have uh, you originally for millions of years have been exposed to these two electromagnetic waves does that make sense to you yes it does thank you very much ish you're welcome so Did you, you get used to it quickly um I don't think that you have anybody suing the government yet because they got cancer from electromagnetic uh, poisoning or from 4D or uh, 4G or 5G uh, energies. It's impossible to, to uh, detect whether that is affecting the human body or not. But it does in subtle ways. But you will evolve to accept it. Is that... Uh, it, is that, that sounds sense? that's that that makes sense thank you you're welcome i'll move on to the next person thank you you're welcome thank blessings you. blessings um on that question do you need some water oh yes i could use some water or i'm not him or you you know right <laughs> okay i forget myself Ish, um, I have a new question. Um, also, I have a one who, in response to what you said, because um, one in response is you mentioned Vatican. I, I've heard that um, current Pope is sentenced in absentia um, because of being part of uh, Satanist rituals. I want to ask if that's true, but um, no. no, it's not true. No he would not you have to understand they these when they elect a pope they know each other very well the cardinals know each other very well and if it was a satanic uh cult then i mean all of them would have to be a part of it all of them because one would not one just one person that in a cult would not be able to elect a uh, a pope that is uh, a Satanist. Okay, that makes sense. So um, now my real question. Uh, once in a while, I perceive my subconscious mind and my conscious mind as completely different beings, as if my subconscious mind was actually, as I say, like really different person or being and uh, my conscious mind speaking and my subconscious mind completely not hearing it and um like kind of living different life <laughs> i want you to 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 elaborate a little bit about that because okay. it's quite interesting uh, but at well, the same time disturbing <laughs> okay the thing is your subconscious is um a recording of everything that happens in your life every second every moment every breath you take every dream you have every thought every perception it is your personal akashic record your subconscious and so in your subconscious there are things that are not in your consciousness that is true your subconscious can perceive things out here in the real world that your conscious does not and but that is being perceived and yes your subconscious sort of is a different kind of person because it is knowing all the facts that it has perceived that and even the facts that are perceived that are not conscious you live in a conscious world you live in a reality where you can see this, that, and the other thing, that's all being recorded and sent to the subconscious, but also at the same time, the subconscious is um, taking in information from that the time that you are living as well. So 
it's a very interesting a subculture, if you will, within yourself. And sometimes you will come out with some thoughts that you don't know where they came from and they don't seem like you. They don't seem like part of anything that you would be thinking of. So that is part of the subconscious bringing some of its information to your reality. Now, the third eye also brings in information from all, all places, from the, from the universe, etc. And that information goes directly to the subconscious. Some of it, it goes to the conscious, but I'd say probably 85 to 90 percent of it goes directly to the subconscious. And that is a knowledge <clears throat> that is not perceived by the consciousness, that is very abstract and uh, very high. So you you cannot perceive it or understand it at this particular moment, but there may be a moment in the future where some of that comes out and you're going, oh, where did that come from? That's really great. That's a wonderful thought. It's an inspired thought, but your subconscious has been uh, gathering information without your knowledge. <coughs> What's that? And at times she perceives a disconnect of who she is, of all that is. Yes, and sometimes uh, you perceive a disconnect of who you are, and you tap into another part of the the mind, the self, the consciousness. Yes. Well, it's very interesting. Let me get, just give you a um, quick example. A year and a half ago, I was in a short relationship, and um, which was not um, right for um, us. So the person was coming to me, my conscious uh, driving to me, okay, to visit and break up with me. My conscious mind exactly knew that he's coming to break up with me. My subconscious mind was very happy that he was coming to visit, and when he broke up with me, my subconscious mind was completely devastated, although my conscious mind kept knowing that that would happen. So that's well, why I'm saying, what the heck? <laughs> you have an interesting connection with your subconscious then, because um, that doesn't usually happen. You usually know, you usually feel disappointed or sad or whatever, because someone broke up with you, but you, but to know that ahead of time is sometimes just a, a intuition, which women very much have, that is a little bit of, of a psychic energy working. So your subconscious was definitely active, and so was your third eye being very active in this situation. So you were experiencing different forms of reality within yourself. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Does that make sense to you back there? Well, I have a question. Yes. So, so, regarding what she said and you said, now I have dreams of past lives and I don't know what they are until I realize, okay, it's a past life. Is that my subconscious telling me about a past life? Or Correct. The subconscious tells you about past lives sometimes because it relates to your present life or it relates to a present future, meaning that there's something coming up that perhaps this past life can give you a little Im information about through reliving a little small portion of the past. Thank you. Um, up next, Trinity has a question. Hello, Hello Ish. Hello, Ish. I asked a question before about the Astro 4D, and I'm going to continue because I'm not quite um, understanding it yet. So you said that our 4D is actually a body. So I was told that my astral goes into my 4D body, but, okay. if, but if it's separate, if my 4D body is separate from my astral and okay so what occupies the 4d body what what spirit what energy who, well, who is if you're trying to live in two different dimensions 
third and fourth dimension at once. Then the astral spiritual portion of the of your body from third dimension, which you were born from, goes and gets uh, involved with the fourth dimensional body. How uh, they created a fourth dimensional body for you? Yes. They created a fourth dimensional body for you so that the spirit of you can be there. Now, the fourth dimensional body is a body, but the spirit that enters it is not. Okay, so the spirit in the 4D body is my own spirit. Correct. From so you transfer your third dimensional spirit into your fourth dimensional spirit. Oh, I my third dimensional spirit into my into your fourth dimensional body, I should say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. So okay. yes, yeah, they can both exist. And yes, you can send your astral body out to visit the universe and do work in the universe. It does not have to go into another body. It does not have to be in in any kind of form. However, if they have made a fourth dimensional body for you then you can send your third dimensional energies, spirits, and all that to your fourth dimensional body. Now, now your third dimensional body will not die because the soul is, the third dimensional soul is, is still intact. So it, you may have a separation. You, you may send a portion of the soul with that astral body in the blueprint form, but it, you still have that still with you to keep you alive in the third dimension. But you are actually uh, absent from your body spiritually. Okay, thank you. However, I still have more questions about that because my my personality in the fourth dimension <clears throat> with my third dimensional astral being yeah. your, here, but is, your, is, you have to understand your spiritual blueprint body it has a different personality than actually you do in some ways because it is the purification, the blueprint of what you should be at this moment in time. The spiritual you is different uh, because you don't always express that in the third dimension. Your spiritual uh, life can be very secret to everybody in the, in, the, in the third dimension. But when it comes out and goes into the fourth dimension, it can be very much different because it's it's not hiding anything. It's not, um, it's much happier or much sadder or whatever it is. It, it, it shows it's true, your true self. Whereas in the third dimension, you don't always do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I can't access any of the memories though. And I'm wondering how it's possible. I know they're in the subconscious. I was told, but how can I access them? Very frustrating. Not your memories from the fourth dimension that is yes that is something that you have to develop and when you're in the fourth dimension let your let your astral body know when you know that you're going to the fourth dimension let your astral body know that you want to remember the fourth dimension and it, it may bring back some bits and pieces at first uh but that is not its true dimension you see your third dimensional and so your third dimensional spirit going to a fourth dimensional body is like sort of in a, a different somebody else's house and um even though it's more itself it's still not remembering because it belongs in the fourth the third dimension and not in the fourth so you have to give it a little reminder that it has to start remembering things in other dimensions Okay, and if I, I've heard that I can't stay there very long because it disintegrates, but how can energy disintegrate? Like my astral self, I heard it would disintegrate in the fourth dimension if I'm there too if long. If you go in body form, if you go in the bodily form to another dimension, that will disintegrate the body, not the, not the spirit. The spirit turns into energy. Energy is always there. So right, that's your, okay. your energy will not disappear in another dimension, but your body will. Right, I understood that, but I was also told in... No, as no, 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 just the body disappears. Just the body, body okay. Yeah. No. All right, all right. Well, the astral can stay there 
for a good deal of time if it wishes, but it will long for the third dimension because that's where it was born into and that's where it feels most comfortable. I see. Okay. Thank you, Ish. Thanks, Trinity. Many blessings. Greetings. So Slava has a question. Greetings, Slash. Slava. <laughs> He says, hello, Ish. It seems that humans, and then he has a bunch of Cyrillic letters. <laughs> and I think he says, I, I'm gonna interpret, are on Mars and the moon for about 50 years. There are some people who share their experience from secret space programs. There are people, even engineers from NASA, which confirm that humans have for a long time have spaceships and anti-gravity technology. If it is appropriate to share, can you please share your vision on that question and confirm or deny this information? Yes, all that you said is true. There are people, there are humans on Mars, there are humans on the moon, there are humans out in space in other places. Yeah. Uh, they're on Kior, they're on uh, Alpha Century One, they're on, they're, they're, in different areas of space. They've been abducted a long time ago. They've been taken and they've, uh, more than one of them, and they've started their own little human cultures in other planets and places. So yes, you will find actual humans in space. Um, and on the moon, there's not that many, there's just a few, but in on Mars, there was about, last year, there was only like 25. This year, there's a lot more. They've sent a lot more from the secret space program to Mars this year because there's a, a, a many unfolding discoveries there, as you know. And they are starting to uh, find uh, that there are parallels between Mars and Earth, and they're just they're studying those. And so that has become a greater concern with within the last eight to ten months excellent thank you uh, there's a question here okay with that same premise that there are other that there are humans on other uh planets most planets are in the third dimensional form or in fourth dimensional or fifth dimensional all the humans that are out there are in third dimensional or higher third dimensional the, the Kior are in high third dimension, which means they're, uh, let, me, let me give you a, an indicator of what I'm talking about. Humans are on their own vibration creationally wise. God created humans in a certain vibration. They are third dimensional and have their own vibration unto themselves. When they go to other planets that are uh, slightly different vibrations because every different species has their own uh, vibration even if it is in the third dimension it's a different vibration in the third dimension so they can still live there without disintegrating in another third dimension because it is a third dimension but they won't live as long they're not they're not native to it unless they have children that are born to that particular world and then that gives them that vibration that gives them that species that world vibration kind of things so you have these people that live in all these different planets but they do not share exactly the same vibration as that planet you understand that understand. so um they so they have to uh, have children on that planet in order for their children to actually live a, a, a longer life there because they become that vibration that's super interesting isn't it <laughs> it is <laughs> um we're kind of, it's like 12 45 i don't know if i should take a couple more questions or wrap it up um, um, i personally have a question yeah. uh, i'd like to i did a a quantum healing whatever and i felt like i could not let go my ego or my conscious mind could not give way to my subconscious mind like i remembered everything that went on in that session 
Like it was like a rabid dog saying, no, 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 I'm not letting my subconscious speak. I would like that to not be the case because I would like to hear what my subconscious has to say to me. Well, let me tell you something. Practical advice. Uh, let me uh, explain to you why that happened. You are not ready for the subconscious to tell what it needs to sell, but it will come. You are you have a fear of what the subconscious will tell someone else because of all of your past experiences. You're not sure if the negative portion of your personality will come out in that subconsciousness. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes. Uh -huh. So you are afraid to let the subconscious be itself because you are afraid of what you were in some past form of this particular life. And so therefore, you, you want to control what comes through. You want to make sure that it's only a positive thing and that it will be uh, a good for everyone. Whereas there is part of you that says, well, what if this part comes through? What if that part comes through? You are in control in every way. You can let go of control and that's still you in control because you have to tell yourself that you trust yourself enough to lose control. You have to lose that control from trusting yourself. Okay. I really and tried. So, I kept telling, saying, back off, get away, go away. Exactly. <laughs> so you see, everyone in this room may have that kind of doubt and fear from a, a past a past human experience a past thing that happened in your life what if that particular situation starts coming off when, uh, out when i am not conscious of what my subconscious is going to say you're thinking oh well will they come out with a bedroom scene will they come <laughs> out with a, a you know i don't think i fear that kind of stuff Honestly, I feel like there's a part of me that's just such a control freak. That this, I don't know. Maybe well, I'm wrong. It is. But like I said, control. That's the word. You control it. You have to give yourself permission to not control it. All right. Because you're pushing against it. That is correct. I'm res I know there was resistance. and I, I was having a conversation. I just couldn't make it go away. But that's okay. But I said I see that with, within your subconscious, there's some very beautiful things that need to come out. Mm -hmm. And so do not be afraid of that in the future, just to take some deep breaths, trust your subconscious to know what they need, the people around you. <clears throat> trust that your subconscious knows what everyone needs. <clears throat> And, drink. Yes. Need another drink, right? So therefore, you can trust your subconscious because it's beautiful. Great. Here you go. Somebody wants to know. Um, Thank you. I think it, this is very confusing because Christine, you've already asked many questions, but okay, try to keep it brief, Christine. Go ahead. Ish, I was wondering, um, there's a lot of uh, stones and a lot of um, other things that, that um, are being developed um, to uh, lower the negative results of the electromagnetic everything that's around us. Is that, um, is that um, a detriment really to the um, change that um, is trying to, is that good or bad? You mean, um, oh, yes, no, no, don't worry. <clears throat> Use organite. Okay, I have a lot of that. Organite is something very that the body can accept and it's very natural and it will it balance you out, even you out, and put you in a pH balance if you use it long enough. And and it's very healthy and um, it, it does control the waves and don't balances and even grounds so uh organite is there are other ones that do similar things but i think organite 
is the most powerful of these stones that you can use for a tool for that. Okay, and then so um, they have one that they think. I have a, a Q wave that um, is supposed to also be um, supposed to keep away the negative parts of um, the energy and everything because I'm around a lot of electrical stuff. Is it real or is it just uh, what the Q wave does is this? Uh, okay, it will uh, lower it will. Uh, it will interfere with the waves that are within you already. Oh. See the okay. waves of all the waves come right through you because waves uh, they hit your skin. They can bounce off or they can go through. It depends on the kind of wave that it is. But what these do is they diffuse they diffuse <laughs> the wave, and so you're really not receiving any kind of harmful message from that wave because it's been diffused. Okay. That's what it does. It's a okay. diffuser. That's okay. all. Thank you. Up You're next, welcome. Wendy has a question. Who? Wendy. Very well, Wendy. Hello. Hi, Ish. Good to see you. Thanks for being here with us today. It's wonderful. I have had some interesting astral travels uh, recently that I wanted to ask you about, and I don't know how to explain it other than it was as if we were several of us were in our light body forms and i was somehow creating what i understand was like uh, like energy cloaks but they were made out of symbols i don't really know how to explain it and then like a couple of days later someone else said to me that they were told that they were also receiving a shamanic cloak from the Pleiadians. So I wasn't sure if any of that's even related or what what maybe that experience was about. I've had several dreams about creating symbols specifically for people's energy light bodies, but I don't really understand what's happening. Yes, they're protective symbols. They're also symbols of security. There are some people that need these light body cloaks for protection in the astral because they are targets. Now, I'm aware of someone that has a, a light body cloak on a pyramid that's over their head because it is a protective uh, cloak and it's covered with Pleiadian symbols. And so therefore, yes, what your experience is absolutely true. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. And just briefly too, We've, I've been experiencing also many of us seem to be congregating again in different places such as, um, I'm not sure exactly, like hotels and things like that, um, or, or maybe on the ships. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I've been, because the places all seem to be similar but not exactly the same, but there have been many of us together. Are we? You're being summoned, yes. Okay. There are messages for you from that those areas. And you are first contact people. You are those that are, they have decided that will be very helpful for first contact. They are preparing you energetically and with uh, uh, languages. You are prolific in many languages, but you're going to start to get the interpretations to these languages because they want you to be able to speak to the first contact people. Okay, excellent. That's exactly what I thought. Thank you so much, Ish. Thank you so much for being here. You're exactly all, all my love. Thank you. Yeah, Shakwadia. So I think that's the last of our questions, so we can wrap it up on time. I don't know Hi. if there's anyone in the room that wants to give a blessing before we leave. Oh, but first, I guess we will let Jim come back. Before, yeah. <laughs> before, and we send a, send you all our love and appreciation. Thank it's you been so a, much it's for a great being. joy to be here. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Much love. Take care. Much Thank love. you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, hi. Jim. <laughs> How are you doing? 
How you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> we have, I just want to, this is very interesting. Somebody wrote out a blessing and they've been like rewriting it. So I want to read it. All right. Um, um, and then we'll, awesome. and then we'll let the people from your room and a couple okay. people from our room. Who is the, who is so that? This the, is from, oh, Don, Don wrote it. It's from Serena. It's from Serena. Serena. Oh, okay. very good. I'm going to try and pronounce this. <laughs> Chuchiwiha Negaru Havu Chidibi Dar Siki Chama Ru Shi Chu Daba Da Tu Ru Chi A A Yes, it says, my light and the light of my people is becoming more evident in your world, and we will continue to help you uplift and shine so that you may progress accordingly. That Good pronunciation, by the way. That was, <laughs> that was very fun to do. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do the same language. I want to come back through. Okay. You inhabit a blue world, and we much love those kinds of places, for we can inhabit them as well. So we are anxious for first contact to come so that we may visit and see what it's like to be among you. Much love, and we hope that this will be soon. Is there anyone else in the room? Anybody else? Oh, go ahead. May the love of creation be with all of you on this day. May you feel love, compassion, and strength in all your endeavors. And may you fulfill your destiny. Amen. Amen. Uh, De Deb, from our section, Deb would like to share a blessing. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Deb. Okay. Oaka Oka ia, so sa saya ia, wa, kokaya ia, noe ia to saya, ona ia oa, kakae to aya, oda ia to taya. Namaste. Fire, water, earth, and air are the elements that you live in. We live in deep space and find that you are amazing in your own ways. We wish we could be more physical with you but we are sending energy to try and encourage communication with the unseen worlds that we belong to thank you up next uh, we have one from wendy now she on a key list of tomorrow ashana irakose Leana i tasaliantor shamaliantor kwa paia janazi sebijana kliantoriasa i lakisono sopalio shawa la sena tipiki shalioso makura kliasho mala liator seki la shanate la liatoa makiasho mahala namaste people of earth we are here with you and we will make ourselves known you must understand that we are here only for the most positive purposes and we have become part of you only to show you the light of all things be well and let us rise up accept us it is going to be a difficult time for us to prepare for this day but we must show you the truth 
Do you know who that was, Jim? It was a Pleiadian. Okay. I can feel it in my heart. It's what? I could feel it in my heart. It was really <laughs> beautiful and sweet. Thank you, guys. I could feel it in my heart, too. <laughs> that was so sweet. That's amazing. That was an amazing message, actually. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm going to do a tiny baby toning, and, I think, and then we'll be done. All right. Oh, Let your voices rise higher than the realms of angels and claim the destiny that is yours within this realm. Yeah, do that. <laughs> what? So, yes, do that. Yes. Thank All you. right. Thank you, everybody. Remember that the workshop is coming up in August, August 8th through 12th. We have a couple people signed up, but I would like to um, make another deposit on the hotel. So if more of you can uh, sign up now, it would be great. <laughs> We'd love to see you. There are going to be nice hotel rooms this time with a bathroom in every room. So, uh, and also, you know, I, if you, those of you that came last time, remember the accommodations down at, uh, at Dansville where you had to travel to get to the restroom and the showers. That's no longer the case. We're in a motel, a hotel, I should say, and it has a swimming pool. It has pool tables. It has a bar for those of you that uh, so desire, but um, it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. Grindle problem promises to be there uh, because he has stories to tell. I am not sure who else will come, but there's going to be a lot of different kinds of classes this time. Uh, Max is going to talk about uh, the history of our galaxy or, or our planet. So it's going to be really wonderful. And we are going to do some galactic sign language. We're going to do magic. And we're going to, uh, I mean, learn some magic and different things. So it's going to be a different curriculum than we've ever had before. So it's very exciting. So join us and uh, we'll love to see you. We have some people coming from Europe already. So uh, come on. I have, a, I have a question about the curriculum. Um, yep. is there gonna be, are there going to be Reiki tables and, and healing yep. being done yep. as well? Okay. Thank you. Absolutely, we not we cannot uh, we healing is always part of our workshop. Healing, healing, healing is a beautiful thing. Anybody that needs healing, please, uh, we will help you out. Also, there will be uh, day classes for those that don't want to stay uh, that are in the local area. They can come for a day. We'll charge. Uh, just for the day and not for the sleeping arrangements, but they will have to pay for their the food. So mm -hmm. the food in the class. That's it. Okay, thank you. You're and welcome. Have a good week, everybody. Have a good week, everybody. And if you haven't <laughs> read the book, go ahead and I would say read it now because it, it's a good time to read. Uh, from the galaxy with love because they are there's so many in the galaxy that want to send you their love so it is very true much love to you all thank you have a great have a great weekend everybody bye bye love, see